Hi everyone, thank you for tuning in. I'm your instructor Joy. Thank you very much for your continued support with your kind words, questions, booking lessons with me, supporting me here and also on my Patreon page. I really, really appreciate. So today we're going to talk about right hand, the bow grip. I will share with you the five common mistakes when it comes to bow hold and hopefully this will bring some light in your practicing and so that you see why we need to hold the bow properly and then that will make your violin playing much easier. It's going to take less time to conquer all this fancy a difficult bow stroke as well as a simple beautiful tone production. Common mistake number one. Some violinists are very conscious of having all the fingers curved, which has a good reason, but some violinists a little overdo it. So much so, uh, I see some violinists holding the bow with the, at the end of the fingertip like this. Now, the, we are holding the bow, the long stick, only with the finger joint. It is hard enough because we barely have any contact. And on top of that, if you're holding only with the end of the fingertip, it makes it makes it extremely hard to control. Remember, we have to put weight. In order to put weight, we need to have a little bigger grip or deeper grip. So then, so you can do that. Or sometimes we have to just have a little difficult stroke, like a staccato. You need to just be able to, to give a little more. In order to do that, you need to have a little better contact with your bow by grabbing a little deeper. So not with a fingertip, but rather allow your fingers to sink in a bit. When it comes to pinky, that's the only one that sits at the tip. But the rest of the fingers, especially the middle one who applies a weight, and the index finger who guides, or the, even the thumb who has to curve and flatten but has to go deeply in so that again it has a better grip or better control. Yeah, so make sure you have that one. Common mistake number two, overpowering pinky. When you look at this our hand, you know, it's all different lengths of the finger, different uh, muscle power. Um, a lot of one is in rather early stage. We start with, with down bow. Most violins do very well, but as soon as we start up bow like this, I see some violins doing, letting it go index finger or straightening it, and then shifting the weight of the hand from index finger to the pinky as they go up, something like this. And overpowering the pinky. So basically you're holding the bow only with a pinky and the thumb. What's wrong with that? Not only it's going to be hard to make beautiful sound because bow gets unusually very heavy, but this is not function of the pinky. When it comes to um, controlling or showing the direction, it's the index finger job. Index finger has, a, has to be wrapped around the stick very well because it has or not many many functions but two important ones which is you you want to use it as a pinching one or just a matele like you're using that one of course you would if you have all fingers it's gonna be nicer but the motion comes from index um but here also the index finger changes the contact point where the hair is touching on the stick so now if we want to go at the contact point closer to the um, fingerboard we push it or we bring it back towards us you see so with the index finger you are driving the direction let's see yeah, i'm pushing it and bring it forward not only that but also uh, giving a little accent that one now when it goes up bow, we do have to curve our pinky, that is true. But index finger still stays as a main driver. And the pinky just curves it to make the bow lighter. But here, make sure you don't let go of the index finger, just keep holding it, but rather you will turn your bow a little this way. I mean, so the bow here gets tilted, which has to be accompanied with right elbow and the wrist, so the bow gets lighter. Yeah, so the entire time. Sure, we want to curve the pinky, but index finger has to stay there. Now, that second one. <laughs> Common mistake number three. Um, forgetting, talking about over curving pinky. Sometimes we forget to curve pinky 
and thumb. This is also one of the main cause of a squeaky unwanted sound. So when, as I showed you earlier, as you go towards a fra, because it's a heavier part of the bow, we need to, um, well, the elbow comes up, it up, wrist comes up, but also the important part is that you have to curve your pinky and the thumb together while raising the wrist. By doing that one, you're tilting the bow using less number of hair, just using on the side, and then making the bow lighter. So if I do not, if I keep it all straight, my thumb and the pinky straight, either I have an ugly sound near the fall because it gets too heavy, or some violinists or many, just avoid this part altogether. This is just go until here, and then this part was rarely used, or they lift up and they go down like that, which cause a bouncing ball too. Make sure I have access of the know how to curve your pinky and the fro only near the fro not at the tip but only near the fro because this will give you a lot of um, different bow control which will give also a lot of tone characters now i am aware there are bow group called russian bow holder which is rather keeping well index finger very rough but rather pinky and thumb is rather um straighter um they they make the um, bow near the frog with the other part of the arm to make it lighter. You have way too. But when it comes to near the frog, you will soon see when you have a little more flexible finger joint, it's less work and you can have a little more finer adjustment instead of using elbow and the wrist. Long story short, the sooner you learn to curve your pinky and the thumb near the frog, the better. That's a common mistake. Number three. Common mistake number four, overstretching your hand. This I see a lot when, when I, I see students who start with a Suzuki method. Something like this. So very much spaced out between fingers and because the intention of Suzuki teachers, I understand, so they put certain marks, index finger goes there, middle finger goes there and so on. But um, you have to understand all this one ball grip is there so that you can control, you can micromanage every single motion. It's hard enough to micromanage, but if your hand is already stretched out, you see how tense my muscle is already before I do anything. If your hand is already stretched out like this, you're starting with a tensed muscle. You want to have a, a little space between fingers just enough so you have a control because you don't want to close it totally up either. That's not it. Space it enough so that you can control it. But at the same time, you want to keep muscle relaxed because as soon as you start playing, there will be another multitasking happening. So no need to start with a tense muscle. Last one, common mistake number five. Keeping same bow grip at the frog and at the tip. Now, um, the bow is constantly moving and because when we learn rather early stage of the violin, we have this picture of the ideal bow grip, whether it's Franco-Belgian or Russian, we have the bow grip. And then we have the one in mind and um, many violinists being good students, they want to keep the bow grip. Great! But one thing that we often forget as the bow moves, our bow grip has to be changed also because our hand is going away from our heart. And then comes back. Fra towards the tip. I don't know if you can see. Oops. At the tip, my pinky and the thumb is straight. And also my hand got slightly tilted towards the index finger. And when I get closer, my wrist comes rather upwards and not only I curve my pinky and the thumb, but also hand, hand shape is rather vertical near the frog, whereas at the, at the tip, it was rather diagonal, closer to horizontal, right? It's a, just naturally that's how we do. If you forcefully to hold it, you have to compensate with the other part of the arm and the elbow, therefore, that's when we create another tension in your arm and then, and then elbow.
which makes your job harder. So I see some very good violins working very hard, try to keep this um, bow grip and forcefully holding the bow grip near the near the tip. Therefore, every part of the right elbow and arm is being tensed up. Allow your nature to work with you. Uh, often going with a natural physics is a good approach, even though it's hard to always uh, relate to that one because the violin holding that is not necessarily most natural posture. But generally speaking, when your hand goes away from your heart or away from your torso, allow your hand just to be straightened and then the hand will adjust itself by turning slightly so you can keep holding it and then vice versa. Yeah, just play open string like this. Understanding the hippo grip at the frog and at the tip are different. Yeah, I hope this gave you some ideas and I hope you can um, try yourself. And this can be just a couple of minutes a day, but just giving uh, attention to a very basics can save you a lot of time and a lot of pain. Yeah, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching and hope to see you again. Bye bye.